I've had the privilege and the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Gadkari uh, very often over the last 10 years. So it's a uh, welcome back to the IBLA stage, Mr. Gadkari. It's wonderful to have you here. Since we are talking about awards and we're talking about leadership, uh, political leaders, ke liye, sir, uh, पुरस्कार का निर्वाचन से काफी लिंक है और आपका जब री इलेक्शन होता है तो आई गेस जनता की तरफ से वो ही एक पुरस्कार माना जाएगा पर लीडरशिप की अगर बात करें गडकरी जी तो लीडरशिप का क्या मायना आप इस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में आप मानते हैं और आपका लीडरशिप स्टाइल कैसे चेंज हुआ है कैसे इवॉल्व हुआ है आप नागपुर के क्षेत्र से तीन टाइम के एम रहे हैं तो आपका लीडरशिप स्टाइल कैसे इवॉल्व हुआ है Okay, for every leader, vision is very important. You can donate I, but you cannot donate vision. And the futuristic vision of our country is very important. We have big population, and still we are facing the problem of unemployment, poverty, and for that reason, we need to increase the productivity. And infrastructure is very important. Because water, power, transport, and communication, these are the basic infrastructure. And without that, we cannot get investment, capital investment. And without capital investment, industry and business, we cannot increase the employment potential. And without increasing the employment potential, we cannot eradicate the poverty. So it is very important for every country to increase the growth rate. And that's the reason that the vision of our Prime Minister to make India is Atmanirbhar Bharat, economy of five trillion dollar, and we are the third largest economy. That is the dream of our Prime Minister, to make Indian economy as third largest economy in the world. For that reason, from starting from small village up to the capital, everywhere we have to plan and visualize the futuristic planning and the implementation by considering the futuristic development. That is very important from the grassroots level to higher level. And I am from Nagpur, so I starting my all development in Nagpur. Then I was in Maharashtra. I got offered to construct Varli Bandra ceiling project, 55 flyovers, Mumbai Pune Express Highway. And after that in Delhi, now again the infrastructure is with me, road infrastructure is with me. Yes. And today we don't have any problem, no money problem, nothing, no problem because it's a Mumbai. Which gave us the support at a time when we start the 55 flyovers and Mumbai Pune Express mm. Highway. And just six months before, in Mumbai Stock Exchange, in our Inuit model, our bond issue was subscribed for seven days. Mm. But first day within seven hours, it was seven times oversubscribed. That is the support from the city. That is the reason. And we are now monetizing the road. Economic viability is good. My target is at least we have to make the road of 5 lakh crore per year. But there are some small problems, land acquisition, uh, judiciary problem, then environment, forest problem. Problem is always there. But I always telling to my people that there are some people who convert problems into opportunities. And there are some people who convert opportunities into the problem. So this is the already problem there, but we are trying our level best to make India as the third largest economy in the world. We know which camp you belong to, Mr. Gadkari. You, you know, you've set us up very comprehensively with the many targets that you've laid out. So let me try and address each one of those. Let's start with the growth issue. We've just seen the Q2 GDP numbers come in, sir, and it's been slower than expected. The finance minister said that this is not a systemic slowdown. It's largely on account of the fact that we had elections, and so government capex was paused. Uh, what is the ask of the private sector? Do you believe that the government capex, the front loading that's happened there, will have to continue to be done in order for the economy to grow at a fast clip? What is the ask of the private sector today? The private sector is very important. In our uh, particular GDP, the 14% in growth that contributes from agriculture, 22 to 24% from the manufacturing sector, and 52 to 54 percent is from service sector. I am fully concentrated in agriculture. Now the problem is that the once upon a time at a time 47, the 90 percent of the population belongs to agriculture, rural and tribal India. Now today this population 30 percent migrated to the urban area. And the problem is for 65 percent of the population 
our growth rate is only 14 percent so we need to have more irrigation jal jameen jungle and janwar we have to adopt the new technology and i because of i am very much related to the agriculture i always tell it to the farmers that the innovation entrepreneurship science technology research skill and successful practices and particular rural technology you can this is the knowledge and conversion of knowledge into wealth is the future so now i am from 2004 mukesh bhai knows that i am constantly trying to diversification of agriculture towards energy and power yes. sector and today the 22 lakh crores of import of the fossil fuel i am not against any fossil fuel but that because of that we are 22 lakh crore going from the country so if we can diversify this money to the rural agriculture and tribal india our agriculture growth will growth rate will go up to 22% and that is going to create more purchasing power in the rural and tribal india so today just giving a small example hmm. our government start making ethanol from corn the last year the cost of the corn was 1200 rupees per quintal but because we have taken the initiative the cost is coming yeah. 2400 rupees per quintal the double income for the farmer is because of the policy so that the way we have to more uh, we need to have more concentration on agriculture rural and tribal india but it is not only with the government money mm. we need private public investment in it and what are the best practices in the world and the technology where we need to apply for that and already is a success story but do you believe that uh, government capex is likely to aid growth in q3 and q4 uh, and uh, you know if, at least as far as the sectors that you're concerned with do you believe that we're likely to see a pick up as far as capex is concerned up to the end of the year i feel that there will no problem because in my own department my budget is 2 lakh 80000 crore I don't have any problem. Before March end, we will complete that. You will complete that. You know, you brought up the issue of fossil fuels, uh, and of course, your pet project, which is ethanol blending. So let me address both those. Let me talk to you about the electrification project that the government has been on a mission on. Now, fame has sort of converted itself into PM E Drive. I know you've previously also said that it is time for industry to now start to look beyond subsidies. When do you believe we will be ready for a subsidy-less future as far as EVs are concerned? And is the government now looking? looking at diversifying its way outside of just focusing on evs because even today penetration is still well under 10% so the world over we're seeing a retreat from electrification of mobility is the government looking at any change as far as strategy is concerned first of all you need to understand the importance of atwell industry it is with my department actually time when i taken charge as minister the size of the industry was 7 lakh crore today the size of our industry is 22 lakh crore and this is the industry which is giving maximum revenue as a part of gst to the state and central government this industry up till now creates 400 4 crore 50 lakh jobs and now the maximum export is with this industry today because of alternative fuel and biofuel we are very much popular and now i am confident that domestic market is good now in world Uh, USA is number one. They have the size of atom industry of 78 lakh crores. China is 47 lakh crores, and India is 22 lakh crores. Now we have a target that within 10 years we will be number one in the world because of alternative fuel and biofuel. And now you just understand. At the time when we are started electric vehicle, I remember mm. the many people like you, the journalist, asked me how it is going to happen. There was a lot of confusion in the mind of the people. Yeah. but at that time the lithium ion battery rate was 150 dollar mm-hmm. per kilowatt per hour now today it comes to 110 dollar and when it will come to 100 dollar per kilowatt per hour the cost of uh, uh, petrol diesel vehicle and electric vehicle will same mm. and that is the reason today we have 400% rise in some of the model there is a waiting list now mm. and because if you are spending 120 rupees of petrol for the same distance for electric the cost is 15 rupees and even in the flex engine now the tata mahindra hyundai yeah. then toyota and uh, my, all these company are now already started flex engine and now the rahul rajiv is here i just launched his cng motorcycle you understand the economics don't think about the pollution 
at that time the one his motorcycle for petrol cost is 2 rupees 25 paisa per kilometer mm. and for the cng it comes to 1 rupees mm. so it is cost effective and that is the reason that the import substitute cost effective pollution free and indigenous and now because of the scrapping policy we will reduce the cost of the components by 30% less mm. and will be more competitive in the world market and i feel that our automobile industry will be number one 100% I am confident about it. Well, there are many people from the automobile industry here, so perhaps a round of applause for the automobile industry as well as for Mr. Gadkari's <laughs> vision. But you talked about CNG. Is there a view now within government to, as I said, diversify the bets beyond just electrification and electric mobility to other? Actually, to be frank, a lot of people asking me this question. The size of the fossil fuel economy is so big Whatever the initiative we are taking for ethanol, methanol, biodiesel, LNG, CNG, electric, hydrogen, I got a hydrogen car. The name of the car is Mirai. You've been driving that for a while. Yes, the <laughs> car is driving by the driver. I don't want to. But, You've uh, been driven in it for a while. <laughs> actually, hydrogen is the future. And the green hydrogen is the future. Because by electrolyzer process making hydrogen, for one kg of hydrogen, we need 150 unit of power. Now the municipal waste are by using biotechnology, generating biomass, using for getting it methane in biodigester. And from that methane, we can convert into hydrogen or we can convert into CNG. Mm. So a lot of municipal waste is available in the country. So we, that can be a cheaper source for hydrogen. So, so I, I know you believe in waste to wealth and that has been your mantra as well, Mr. Gadkari. But let, you know, you brought up the issue of invits. Uh, and I think a lot of people here in the markets are also looking at the monetization pipeline that the government is focused on. What should we expect now as far as the road transport sector is concerned, sir, sir in I terms of monetization? I, I, my toll income is now 52,000 crore. And within two years, my income will go to 1,40,000 crore. We are making Green Express Highway, and there is no problem about the money is concerned. Because my every project is economically viable. The internal rate of return is good. At the same time, we have a good support from the finance ministry, having budget of 2,80,000 crore. And the most important thing, that our prime minister has given the highest priority for development of infrastructure, water, power, transport, and communication. And one thing is very important. Today, the logistic cost in India is 16%, yeah. 14 to 16%. Yes. China, it is 8%. And in European country and USA, the cost is 12%. And now, because of express highway, now Delhi to Mumbai, mm. up to Badoda, it is already completed. 60% work to JNPT also completed. So it will be 12 hours from Delhi to Mumbai. Two hours from Chennai to Bangalore uh, is just the end of de December. Before December, we start that project. Yeah. Then Dehradun to Delhi, two hours. Delhi to Jaipur, two hours. Delhi to Amritsar, four hours. So by which we will reduce the logistic cost as far as the speed is concerned. And the other important thing is, in place of diesel, if they are going to use CNG, LNG, or even any alternative fuel, mm -hmm. or electric trucks are now coming to the market. Mm -hmm. So that is going to reduce the logistic cost and I am sure that within two to three years our logistic cost will be 9%, single digit. 9%, that's ah. your target. That's what you are working towards because that's one of the big issues as far as competitiveness is concerned. I am telling you about one thing. In my all political career, no journalist can ask me any question about my declaration. <laughs> I'm 100% proved to be <laughs> successful in that, but it's a very difficult task. It's not so easy, but I'm sure about it that because of the roads and because of the fuel, 100% it will be going to single digit, so and then we will be more competitive into the export market because the 6% logistic cost which is going to reduce. 100% will be more competent and there will be huge potential for the industry and business in the export. So 9% in terms of logistics costs in two years, Mr. Gadkari, is, that, is years. that, okay, two to three years, is that your commitment here at India Business Leader Awards? There's lots of emphasis, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Actually, the two things which I related with me, now we are starting, I'm thinking I request the investor to invest me. We are planning for making electric highway from Delhi to Jaipur, the cable. 
And now we are just, when I was in Yakoslavia, I got Apple to visit Skoda. So I requested to MD of Tata, Vag. So you make joint venture, there's a flash charging is there. And first project we have sanctioned, the bus is 18 meter length, and that is flash charging here, there for 40 kilometer. And first project is sanctioned mm. in Nagpur. I am doing as a pilot project. And uh, the charging system technologies from Siemens and Hitachi. And now two, three companies are now in the process of making this trolley bus. So that can be a very cheaper transport. We can reduce the ticket rate by 30%. I remember when I got Apple to launch electric double-decker bus in Mumbai from mm. Ashok Leyland. Mm. That is going to reduce the cost and for, at the same time reduce the pollution. So as a fuel, the cost involved in electric is very cheaper. If you are spending 100 rupees on petrol or diesel, the electric that cost will be 10 to 12 percent. Now the people are doing solar panels, rooftop. Again, that cost is going to reduce. So that is going to make miracles, in particular in the oil fields. But uh, Mr. Katkari, you know, you've been India's longest serving minister for road transport and highways, ladies and gentlemen, no, over 10 years uh, uh, in, in office uh, uh, he spent. But let me ask you this, uh, you know, you talked about the target that you've set of uh, 5 lakh kilometers annually as far as road construction is concerned. In your experience and in your assessment, what have been the biggest obstacles? What are the biggest deterrents? And since we're talking about the road to 2047, what are the things that you would like to change? Actually, frankly speaking, even in when I was minister in Mumbai, to getting clearance for Worli Bandra link project, I have to struggle for two years. There was a public agitation. And actually, you understand, this is very important for Mumbai to understand. When I awarded that project to SSC company with the cost of 420 crore, lastly, the payment given by government to him is 1800 crore, and people are paying the toll. And that was the project was stopped by the honorable justice, honorable politicians. And the people was telling oh, Ambedkar ka smarak khatam ho jayega, Savarkar ka smarak khatam ho jayega, Mashli ka dhanda band ho gaya. Once I remember, I know some of the English paper journalists have taken them with the, that boat and taking to that Varali. Waha to pura gatar tha, waha machhi thi nahi. To ganda smell aane laga to bole nahi, niklo ya se, bole nahi ruko ya, ruko ya. Ab mujhe batao machhi dikhti hai kya? Mashli pani mein hoti hai, gutter mein hoti hai kabhi? Nahi, but tum likhte ki ho che che ka loom. Tab ho sab karte karte ho project hoa. So there is a problems related land acquisition, court cases. Already many problems are there, but it is the test of the leadership. I remember the Bala Sahib Thakre once gave me a slogan written on the acrylic sheet. And I was telling him, Mr. Bala Sahib, ye problem hai ho. Well, Nitin, I will tell you one thing. Thapa ko bilo hai, ek mujhe ek I like people who can get the things done. Well, he don't tell me all these things. I want to complete this project, you should do it. So that is to be positivity and commitment and transparency and corruption-free system. That is very important by which we can achieve that goal. Well, Mr. Gadkari, thank you very much for joining us here thank today. You. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who can get things done, we wish you the very best of luck. Appreciate your time and joining us once again at the thank India you. Business Leader Awards. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.